as Auburn welcomes Ole Miss to the Plains. These teams are almost mirror images of one another. From their young coaches and up-tempo styles to their records. A great atmosphere here in Auburn, Alabama. Both of these teams three and one and coming off losses. Let's see how they respond as Auburn is coming off a bye. Ole Miss, an embarrassing loss at Alabama a week ago. Gus Malzahn ready to lead the Tigers out onto the field. And his counterpart and friend, Hugh Freeze, ready to bring the Rebels into action. Just a beautiful night in Auburn. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. Temps in the 70s, clear skies, and we've got a good football game. Ole Miss, number 24 in the country, on the road to take on the Tigers of Auburn. Welcome inside the press box, everybody, alongside my partner, former Georgia All-American Matt Stinchcomb. I'm Clay Matvick. Don Davenport will be with us shortly. We expect a good one. These two teams are a lot alike, and they're up-tempo. Uh, very similar in a lot of regards, and this outcome here tonight could decide how the rest of the season unfolds for both. In a lot of ways, you look at Ole Miss, an established program in only year two under Hugh Freeze, Gus Malzahn returning to the Plains, and an emerging program for the Auburn Tigers. This could be the rubber match that I think they need. And when you look at what Ole Miss needs to do in this ball game, they have to find a way to rebound after being shut out by Alabama a week ago and get back on track in their red zone. They were 0 for 2 after being excellent in that area when you get in those scoring opportunities and finally make Auburn beat you with the passing game and Nick Marshall. And for Auburn, they had a scrappy loss at LSU a couple of weeks ago coming off by. And this team under Gus Malzahn, a different looking Tiger team than it was just 12 months ago. There's fight in this Auburn football team, and that's why they have to build on the second half of what happened at LSU. It was a rainy game. It was sloppy in the first half. They dug a hole, but they fought back, scoring 21 second half points. And they have to today find a way to contain Ole Miss's offense and keep them off of the perimeter. That'll be critical. That's how Alabama had a great deal of success versus the Rebels. Hugh Freeze and Gus Malzahn followed a similar career path to get to be a head coach in the SEC. For more on that, let's go down to Don. You know, the two coaches had not spoken. They're good friends. They hadn't spoken since Sunday, and that was through text until pregame warm-ups just a little, little while ago. The two spent a lot of time together. They chatted for a while, but head coach Gus Malzahn tells me absolutely nothing football-related was said. They were just catching up. Now, as far as on the field, both coaches admit that the defense have a little bit of an advantage because they know what they're going to see offensively. Hugh Freeze, though, said he certainly expects his buddy to bring out some new wrinkles offensively. Thank you, Don. Oh, Miss is going to start with the football. Cody Parkey getting ready to tee it up. Ole Miss won the toss, and they won it right away. Jalen Walton, number six, is back deep for the Rebels. Twenty-three yards per return over his career. 
Parkey does not put it in the end zone as we're underway. And Walton out across the 25, driven down at the 27. And Bo Wallace, quarterback for Ole Miss, gets ready to go to work. Wallace said before the Alabama game last week, we can put up points on anybody. Well, he was proven wrong. They were shut out by the Tide. Besides that, though, Matt, it's been a pretty good season for the second year starter. Yeah, a lot cleaner season so far for Bo Wallace. Plagued by turnovers a year ago, something the coaches wanted him to rein in. He is a gunslinger type of mentality at the quarterback position. He wants to hit the home run with every offensive snap. And he's got a home run hitter behind him at tailback in Jeff Scott. Wallace forced to check before the very first snap. And they go to Scott. And that's what Auburn wants to do, Matt. They want to force Scott to run between the tackles. Well, and it's no surprise. When you look at Jeff Scott, the guy's a munchkin out there. He's not like he's going to slam into there between the two tackles, run into the teeth of the defensive, and that's exactly what the Auburn Tigers want, to funnel the ball towards the middle of the line of scrimmage. Second and nine. Wallace to the outside, and it's Scott in the flat, turns it up. He's got a first down. And the pace of play is dictated for both teams by how many first downs they can pick up quickly. And Alabama certainly uh, did a good job shutting Ole Miss down on that last week. And you can see, I guarantee you, Gus Malzahn can't stand the fact that Ole Miss is 1.7 seconds faster than him. Wallace on the keeper. And he has stood up at the 42-yard line by Josh Holzer. Depth that safety hasn't been a problem for Auburn like they thought it might be at the start of the season when Demetrius McNeil was dismissed. So now second and six. Wallace complete. There's Jamez Logan, the big target. And another first down as they're into plus territory. When you look at it, that's something that Ole Miss has in spades. Weapons out wide. Jamez Logan being one of many receiving threats that the Rebels have. After the 16-yard pickup, Wallace bouncing around, sets and throws, incomplete. Jeff Scott wants a penalty flag, and he's got one. Holding, number 71, offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, three for the first down. But the flag is actually going to go against Ole Miss. This is something that will challenge this offense part of the reason that they can pace when they go up tempo is getting positive yardage plays and the first down is the gateway to that that's where Q freeze wants to drop the hammer on the gas and really accelerate you see right there I think they're towards the end as it looked like Pierce Burton lost control of the end towards the inside Watch it back to the 48 of Ole Miss. Now Wallace over the middle has a receiver and it's caught. Hauled in by Evan Ingram, the rookie making a big impact from the tight end position. And it's a gain of nine. There you see something that defensive coordinator at Auburn, Ellis Johnson, mentioned where the play action can create passing windows. There Wallace able to find a slot to get the ball to Ingram and almost regain the yardage seated on the holding call. Three wide receivers right on second 11. A screen to Dante Moncrief. Doesn't get much. Moncrief playing through a sprained shoulder suffered last week against Alabama. It's a gain of five as we take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Lee and Moncrief and Scott. It's going to be fun to watch Therese and Ford for Auburn. Where the function of D Ford more than anything else to see if Auburn can't get some natural pressure without having to bring blitz on Bo Wallace as a passer. They feel as if they can rattle him if he stays in the pocket. Ole Miss had trouble converting on third down against Alabama. Wallace in trouble here. Penalty flags are down and so is Wallace. D Ford. 
brings him down at the 49-yard line. He's rounding back into form after missing two weeks with a knee injury. It's a loss of 11. And the penalty is against the Rebels. It's fourth down. They're going to have to punt. We could see how key it is when you pick up a penalty on first down, and it's the same offender again. It's Pierce Burton. Just doesn't turn loose on Elijah Daniel. And once again, no need, reason to take it. Force the punt. Get the ball back for your offense. Obviously, though, that old Miss Rebel offense, you can see it once they start to click. But the penalty got them out of the flow of the offense and set them back, and resulting in this loss of downs. Quan Bray back to return this punt from Tyler Campbell. Campbell ranks third in the nation at 48 yards per punt. Do they pin him deep? That's going to be a touchback. So Auburn will start at the 25, a 49-yard punt for Campbell. All right, here comes Nick Marshall, junior college transfer. Didn't arrive on campus until June, but he's already proven he can win games. However, he's still a work in progress for Gus Melzahn. What they need out of Nick Marshall, they know his playmaking ability. They like his decision making, despite the fact that he's thrown two interceptions the past two ball games. But what they need him to do is be better on the intermediate throws to stay in rhythm for their offense. Marshall throwing on first down is complete to Marcus Davis, having an impressive true freshman season. Picks up four. Elston makes the tackle. Marshall, the seventh different Auburn starter in seven years. You can see against LSU through two picks. It started out very shaky. Obviously, a lot of rain and weather probably impacted the performance. They dump it off to Trey Mason, and he gets loose into the second down. Out across midfield and final. Dragged down at the 48 of Ole Miss by Senquez Golson. A 28-yard gain after the catch. Both of these teams will use the back out of the backfield. Jeff Scott gets quick in space, but Trey Mason, who's a more physical runner, can also make you miss in space and get yards after the catch. They go back to Mason. They'll carry it this time. Mason rushed for over 1,000 yards last year. He's on pace to do it again. As we take a look at our Lee Jeans impact players, and Mason... After the seven-yard pickup, out there with Reese De Smukes, the senior center, junior center, I should say, for Auburn. Marshall on the keeper, first down and more. Inside the 15-yard line. Gus Malzahn said, my quarterback needs to be a better run threat. We're already seeing that here in the first quarter. It's a gain of 27. He did a great job. It's like a zone to the right, and yet you've got an opportunity to leak your quarterback to the weak side to the left. And Jay Prost did a good job leading. Mason down at the one. Boy, Ole Miss is really struggling against this run game early. This is the concern for Ole Miss's defense, knowing that, yeah, they're similar philosophies, but Auburn is far more physical in the run game. And you could see that capability with that inside run. First and goal. Touchdown, Trey Mason. <laughs> A six play, 80 yard drive for the Tigers. Go for two. Incomplete. Ryan White, the holder, threw it into the end zone, and it's incomplete. Intended for Tony Stevens. But Auburn looks really good on its first series here tonight at home, and they lead it six to nothing. Trey Mason doing the honors. All right, Matt, 6-0, Auburn. 
Six plays, 80 yards in a minute and a half. And Trey Mason accounted for 48 yards on that drive, 19 on the ground, 29 receiving, and then caps the drive with the one-yard touchdown run. Yeah, that, that offensive drive was a clean one. And if you're Rhett Lashley, the offensive coordinator for Auburn, this is what you wanted to see to open up this ball game. They were very disjointed offensively in the first half versus LSU. Incomplete passes, derailing their offensive rhythm. In this ball game, you get Marshall going early, a couple of easy completions on intermediate passes. You hit a back out of the backfield and then let the ground game get established. Auburn has to be pleased with that opening drive. Ole Miss, defensively, they've got a lot of concern. Their tackling was a serious issue. A lot of missed tackles on that previous drive where they had defenders in position to make a play. There's that old line for Auburn. It has been intact the entire season and getting better every week. Certainly look good on the opening series. As Parkey puts it into the end zone, that's his 16th touchback of the year. The defensive coordinator, Ellis Johnson, will take that every time as Wallace brings the Ole Miss offense back out on the field. Bo Wallace in that opening possession, you think about it, the holding call, part of that was a function of the quarterback having the football in his hands. Nowhere to go with the ball downfield. The defensive coordinator at Auburn, Ellis Johnson, he said, we had that game in week one versus Washington State. They throw the ball a lot. His defense can hold up in man coverage. He feels comfortable versus this Ole Miss Rebel passing attack. And so far, the coverage creating two penalties, two lost opportunities by the Ole Miss Rebels. Johnson back in the SEC after one year as head coach at Southern Miss. Likes the talent, especially those young D linemen for Auburn. Scott bounces to the outside. Good run on first down, and that's going to be a key tonight for Ole Miss. Picking up good chunks on first down. Give Scott nine there. That's what they want to get rolling. You know, Jeff Scott, they tried the middle of the line of scrimmage on the opening possession, but what they really want is him out in space. Wallace. I think he lucked into a first down because Auburn had that red pretty well. Carl Lawson. The rookie defensive end, the number two overall recruit on the ESPN 300 last year, brings him down. Wallace just slipped by him to move the chains. Once again, you see what, what's happening, though. Similar game plan. Let the defensive ends play wide and upfield and force Wallace to keep it. is the number two rusher on this Ole Miss team. Checking the play again. Play fake. Wallace will keep. He is nifty. He has three rushing touchdowns on the year. Good pickup. I'll bring up second. Check that. First down as they give him 11 yards on the play. He did pick it up. One of the things that Coach Johnson pointed out, most defensive coordinators say Bo Wallace operates this offense very proficiently. He understands the reads at the edges of your line of scrimmage to know, is it a give to the back? Is it a keep? There, makes the right decision for the first. Screen to Moncrief. And the field safety. Ryan Smith stepping up to make the tackle. Moncrief facing a lot of double teams this year. It's opened the door for other receivers, but Moncrief is still the face of that receiving core. As Barry Brunetti comes out, he has kind of been their short yardage and goal line quarterback. Did not play against Alabama because of a shoulder injury. Takes his first snap on second and seven. He wants to run. And he's free along the sideline. Barry Brunetti, the senior out of Memphis. See Barry Brunetti, he does an excellent job. The guards get out in front and are able to escort him to the perimeter. Might have stepped out of bounds right before he got nudged out of bounds. But we'll see Barry Brunetti. They like to get him in the ball game to take some of these shots off of Bo Wallace who really is their most physical runner when he's in the ballgame. He got 22 inside the 30 of Auburn. Corvick Neat goes in motion. He's back from injury. Inside handoff. It's Jalen Walton, his first touch tonight. 
Out of the backfield, another versatile, speedy back for Ole Miss. It's Robinson Therese on the tackle, a gain of four as Bo Wallace comes back at quarterback. Second and six. Auburn was ready for Walton that time. No game. Let's get a Georgia-Tennessee update in the studio. Thanks, Clay. Georgia's national championship hopes hanging in the balance. Visiting Tennessee. Third and goal. Eight seconds left. Down seven. Aaron Murray to Rontavious Wooten. He's got it. Point after good. We're heading to overtime in Knoxville. We'll keep you posted, Clay. That one in Knoxville going to come down to the wire. Meanwhile, we're just getting started here in Auburn. Eighth play of the drive, third and six for the Rebels. Wallace over the middle, incomplete to Laquan Treadwell. And now fourth down for Ole Miss, and we'll see what Hugh Freeze decides to do here. Well, a week ago, I think Hugh Freeze felt a sense of urgency to try to get as many points as he could versus the Alabama defense. I think they feel as if they match up better with Auburn from a skill standpoint, from a talent standpoint. He's going to go ahead and go for the points, see if he can't come away with it and get on the scoreboard. 42-yard attempt for the senior Andrew Ritter. He's 3 of 5 on the year with a long of 52. And this one right between the eyes. Ole Miss is on the board. Drive stalls out, but they get three. Beautiful night in Auburn, Alabama. A big game for both of these three and one programs. 6 3 Tigers. It is 6 3. Bobby, uh, get too close to Melvin. A little exception taken there. Ma mascot on mascot crime. So they're on the same team. Don't get confused. Good start for Gus Malzahn's Tigers. That opening drive punched Ole Miss right in the mouth. And young quarterback Nick Marshall and the offense ready to get it back. Trey Mason back deep to return this kick. Mason had a 100-yard return for a touchdown against Washington State in the opener. You and I were here for that one. He is a dangerous return man. One of those big plays. That game was dictated by big plays. Already in this game, we've seen a couple of big gainers by the Auburn offense. Now, well, Andrew Ritter's not going to give him a chance. It's a touchback. Drive recap presented by Tire Rack. And that first drive for Auburn, Nick Marshall looked really good. Two for two passing, 32 yards, and this 28-yard run. When they run the same play, Gus Malzahn, if you don't stop, it'll come right back to it, except this time, Marshall gives it to Mason, and he's able to break tackles at the line of scrimmage. Finally able to punch it in so far. Even if Ole Miss is in the right defense and they've got defenders there to make the play, Mason or Marshall able to break tackles for yardage. And this is the kind of depth that Auburn has at that position. Cameron Artis Payne now is out at tailback. And we'll see Corey Grant two to them. Marshall throws on first down. It's Sammy Coates out across the 30-yard line for a pickup of six. The Atlanta Football Classic coming up tonight between North Carolina 8 and T and South Carolina State. College football presented by McDonald's tonight at 10.30 on the U, also live on Watch ESPN. Second and four. It is Artis Payne. He is a bulldozer. First down to the 41. He has been a great addition to this Auburn backfield this year. He's got some girth and he's able to get downhill. Now, this is the biggest difference. We talk about the importance of Ole Miss getting on the perimeter. That's not a concern for Auburn's offense. If they're able to establish the inside run game, you touched on it earlier, Clay. This is a physical offensive front. They've had the same guys in there. and They're starting to work better and in concert with one another. She wants to throw it first down again, and he's going deep. Sammy Coates is down there, but can't haul it in. First incompletion for Nick Marshall tonight. He was going for the home run with Coates. He is the team's number one receiver, and they're trying to groom him to be the go-to guy. Well, he's a big play threat. You can see able to get behind the coverage of Trey Elston. A little bit of hand fighting. I think when Elston reached out, 
was just enough to slow down Sammy Coates. The concern with Nick Marshall is, can you run, run underneath his deep ball? He's got that strong of an arm. Go, 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 go. Marshall on second and 10, throws again. Complete to the tight end, Brandon Fulce, and it'll bring up third and manageable for the Auburn Tigers. They're 40% this year on third down. That's not outstanding. This is kind of the average distance that the Auburn offense has faced this season, third and seven. You see there, Denzel Kendici, brother of Robert Kendici. They've had their work cut out for him tonight. Up dropped. Marcus Davis, the true freshman. And drops have been a problem for this receiving core this year. You know, they showed up in their last ball game versus LSU. We've mentioned it was kind of a rainy night. The ball might have been slick, but the passing game never got on, on the rails in the first half. So far tonight, it's been pretty good, but you can see you know, the drops. They get you off schedule, the overthrow on the first down. You come back, try to get it to third and manageable, but seven yards is still a chunk of yardage to try to pick up, and it lets Ole Miss's defense get out of the gate. First punt for Stephen Clark. He's been in the running for the Ray Guide Award each of the last two seasons. Jeff Scott steps up, fields it at the 15-yard line. And cut down at the 20. Good coverage by Lewis. Now, Bo Wallace and Ole Miss down a field goal as we're coming up on five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Sights and sounds from Auburn, Alabama. Free game. Great tailgate in here, too. 6-3, Auburn leads it alongside former Georgia All-American Matt Stinchko, my play Matt McDonough, Davenport. He's down on the sidelines tonight. So far, it's been a good ball game, and that's what we expected coming in. Both teams three and one. Ole Miss has punted and kicked a field goal on its two drives. So Auburn a touchdown and a punt on its two drives. So now Ole Miss starting this series from its own 20. Bo Wallace, a play fit. Down the sideline goes to Dante Moncrief, and he overshoots him by about eight yards. Ryan White in on the coverage second down. It'll be a good one between Ohio State and Northwestern tonight. And later on ESPN, Washington and Stanford. Remember, Washington upset Stanford last year in Seattle. Over those teams. Rank coming in. Play clock inside of five. Wallace to Laquan Treadwell incomplete, and he was interfered with. Robinson Therese, the hybrid linebacker defensive back, appears to be the culprit. He has been Auburn's top defensive player this year. When you talk to Ellis Johnson, he loves how he's played. Pass interference, number 27, defense. The penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. But he commits the penalty here. Well, Wallace had Jamez Logan for first down yards, but instead he wants to go to Treadwell. The coaches are wanting to say that it was an uncatchable ball, but with Treadwell's lengths, he certainly could have had that ball. You see Therese mugging him on his inside arm. Therese, though, a welcome surprise as a converted defensive back playing in that star position. Barry Brunetti comes back in at quarterback. For Ole Miss. Had a couple of plays on the last series. He hands off to Itavius Mathers, the number three back for Ole Miss. He battles his way to the 41. A gain of eight. This is Ole Miss's version of what Auburn likes to do. They'll run the power as well, pull a guard around in front, and get a big body in front of their backs, and allow them to get downhill. Mathers. As a physical inside runner despite his size. Second and two, Mathers again. And he's going to get just one. So now third and one coming up. Casanova McKenzie in on the tackle. Well, for Ole Miss on third down this season, this has been a very difficult down and distance. As you see them bringing in 
Avon Hooks, who's a defensive lineman, they're going to line him up at the tight end position. They need him as a big body. You see him right there. They want to get some more beef to see if they can't lead up and allow to pick up the, the short yard situation. Brunetti keeps first down. Out to the 45. Let's go to the studio for an update. Thank you, Clay. It's over in Knoxville in overtime. Tennessee with the ball on second and goal. They have the ball first. Pig Howard trying to stretch it out, but he would fumble it. They ruled he fumbled it before he crossed the goal line. So Tennessee gets the ball, and Marshall Morgan from 42 yards wins it. Georgia's first overtime win in six years. But big win for Georgia, but they may have paid the price today physically. Corbett Neat on the end around. Oh, and he's hit hard on the sideline after a hard-earned three-yard gain. Therese just popped him. Second down and seven. Well, that's one way to get your runners, your playmakers on the perimeter. You see Ole Miss, they've had to be more and more inventive as defenses have started to shift the tilt their the line of scrimmage away from Jeff Scott to try to deny the perimeter runs. And so because of that, the Rebels have had to try to evolve so that they can get their playmakers out in space in the run game. Second and seven, Wallace complete. Jamez Logan snags it out of the air. And tumbles out to the 33-yard line. Logan, he is a big target. His 6'3", 183-pound frame makes him easy to spot on those crossing routes. And when he's able to get underneath the coverage, you've got just about all of that 6'3 body available to you. And Bo Wallace delivering the football on target, but Jamez Logan snagging it. They stay with Logan. Picked up 18 on that first catch. And he gets 14 here. It's time going right back after Ryan White on a back shoulder throw. White was running stride for stride. You see Bo Wallace, this is the veteran presence, and it's got to be frustrating for Ellis Johnson knowing that he had tight coverage with the defender singled up on Jamez Logan. All is seven for nine. Eighth play of the drive. Ole Miss now in the red zone. Wallace, the keeper. Nothing doing. Therese was there first, the star backer. And it's a loss of two. You know, you and I were impressed with him in the season opener. He kind of emerged in that first game of the year, and he hasn't given up that starting spot yet. That was more of a function of the Washington State offense, and he's played so well throughout, he's earned that starting position. And he picks it off here. He's gone. Robinson Therese with his third interception of the year. A 78-yard interception return for a touchdown for Therese. Park here at the extra point. First interception thrown this year by Wallace. And the defensive coordinator for Auburn thought they could bait him into a mistake. Well, they did, and he's waiting. Ellis Johnson by a big explosive play from his defense. Robinson Therese delivers that on the interception return for six. It's somewhat lopsided. Auburn leads the all-time series 27 to 10, but last year Hugh Freeze got a Gatorade bath after the win over Auburn, the final 41-20. A game at Oxford ending a 16-game SEC losing streak for Ole Miss and propelled the Rebels to a bowl game, but right now Ole Miss in trouble as they're down 10.
Robinson Therese with a 78-yard pick six. Yeah, you know, last year, it was the Auburn game that kind of, I think, helped that Ole Miss program realize this is a new day under Hugh Freeze. Might be the same story for a different team tonight if the Tigers continue to perform the way they have so far. Second touchback for Cody Parkey. Well, on that interception, it's a simple play. It's basically a wide receiver screen, and they're wanting Jeff Scott to block Robinson Therese. And there's some miscommunication, I think. Either Laquan Treadwell is supposed to stop. Instead, he sinks backwards. Jeff Scott never gets a hat on Robinson Therese, and he is clean to run right into that throw. Either Bo Wallace was off target on that throw, or he was just not in sync with his true freshman phenom wide receiver, Laquan Treadwell. That happened a couple of times versus Alabama last week where the communication just wasn't there. Now Wallace goes right back to the air, and it should have been caught by the freshman Treadwell. He had it in his hands. Ryan Smith stuck it to him as he went up for the ball. Bring up second and ten. Now, Bo Wallace, 17 interceptions last year. As you said, he really had a problem with that last year. Now we'll see how he responds after throwing his first of the season tonight. Well, you can see no hesitation. Get the ball back downfield right to Treadwell. Just a great play to break up the pass. Incomplete. That time looking for Moncrief. Third down. You can see right now the Auburn defense gaining confidence, recognizing with these incompletions, these passes that are being contested, and pressuring the Ole Miss offense to make plays. They've picked up zero yards on their first two opportunities of this possession. That plays right into the defensive hands, as always. Wallace. Complete first down. It's Moncrief. Now Wallace started the game five for five and then went on a little bit of a slump where he was two for five and now back completing passes here to Moncrief. And it's a 16-yard pickup. Well, that ball just slid under the arm of Jonathan Mincy who closed on the football rise of the right. Jeff Scott. It's a five-yard run for Scott. Second and five as we're just over a minute to go here in the first quarter. Now you see a nice inside run by Ole Miss, usually wanting to tempo, but instead taking their time after a big first down game. Laquan Treadwell, stiff arm, but stopped short of the first down, so it's third and short. Clock stops with 44 seconds to go. Well, Clay, as I mentioned before, you know, third and short. Last time they brought in LeVon Hooks, defensive line, but this time they stay in their base personnel. Wallace is going to keep it. And he's got the first down. Two ranked undefeated Pac-12 teams facing off tonight as number 15 Washington travels to number 5 Stanford. Tonight at 10.30 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Kevin Hogan, the quarterback for Stanford, has really done a great job of that Cardinal offense this year. 11 first downs for Ole Miss. This one is blown dead. Penalty marker on the field. Mark Curls is our referee tonight. Before the snap, false start, number 71, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That's their second penalty on the right tackle, Pierce Burton, tonight. If I'm not mistaken, we didn't hear the call. It might be the third. I think he's yeah. got two holding penalties. And now a procedure penalty. You see him right tackled. That's early. In the two-point stance a lot. And that's what derailed the opening possession by Ole Miss when they were moving the football was a penalty from the right tackle. Could be the last play of the quarter. Is that a live ball? No, they're going to say it's incomplete. Laquan Treadwell has had a hard time the last couple of weeks hauling balls in that he should be catching. You know, before we saw it where it was just a great play by Ryan Smith coming up from his safety position to separate the receiver from the ball. That time, Laquan Treadwell just eager to get upfield before he makes the reception. you got to catch the ball first 
before you can get yards after the catch. That time, the true freshman just losing concentration before completing. And second and 15. Trying to get to the Auburn 40-yard line. Wallace pressured. Gets away. Complete. Jeff Scott to the 49 of Auburn. It'll be third down and long when we come back. That is the end of the first quarter. Casanova McKenzie is slow to get up for the Tigers. Trey Mason, a touchdown. And an impressive opening drive for Auburn. And Robinson Therese with a pick six. They were the heroes for Auburn in that first quarter. Tigers lead it by 10, going to the seven. I can see the card coming onto the field here at Jordan Harris Stadium in Auburn. Casanova McKenzie, the sophomore linebacker for the Tigers, down on his back after colliding with one of his own players, Montrevious Adams, the true freshman defensive tackle. They ran into each other. Adams was slow to get up, too, but he did make his way under his own power to the sideline. Meanwhile, they're going to take McKenzie off on a cart. You never want to see that. And you can see both sidelines, Bo Wallace, the quarterback for Ole Miss who was scrambling around that extended that play, ultimately resulting in this injury to, to Casanova McKenzie. But this is what silences both sidelines in any event. Doesn't matter what jersey you got on, they're all football players and recognize it's a dangerous sport. Whenever they bring the card out in the backboard, that's a sobering reminder of what can happen on this football field. Doesn't happen often very, uh, and at the same time, every player on this football field hoping that Casanova McKenzie's all right. 13-3, Auburn leads it. That was the final play of the first quarter when the injury happened. And this Auburn defense starting to get healthy coming into this week, thanks in part to that bye. They've had a lot of defensive injuries. Justin Garrett out for this game with an injured foot in practice this week. And now it appears they've lost Casanova McKenzie. You see on the play where Angelo Blackson, somehow Bo Wallace escapes his grasp, and you see the collision. And I don't think it's the contact with Montavious, Montravius Adams, rather. You'll see Adams, his knee gets hyperextended, but I think it's when McKenzie comes into the left hip of Bo Wallace that he injures his neck. And what was a little strange is McKenzie lifts his head to see what happened at the end of the play to see if the pass was completed. But then he dropped it, dropped his head and, and did not lift it back up. Obviously, the training staff of Auburn taking every precaution necessary. You know, they immobilize guys. They don't take any chances anymore. They don't move you. You're just tuning in, the player on the field is Casanova McKenzie. Auburn linebacker injured on the final play of the first quarter. Tigers lead it 13 to 3. McKenzie, a sophomore out of Memphis, Tennessee. Ellis Johnson, the first year defensive coordinator for Auburn, saying that McKenzie is. A bit of a work in progress, but he really loves his natural ability. He pointed out last week versus LSU, McKenzie can be a natural pass rusher too when they get him up towards the line of scrimmage. He's still trying to figure out how to fit into this defense. The entire Auburn coaching staff, including that man, Ellis Johnson, he was pointing out that they were finally able to, to get as healthy as they could be. That's part of the, the advantage of a bye week. You see on the same play, two guys injured, and one that you hope is not serious, but based on the way they treated him, 
They want to make sure they take every precaution and he has a chance to heal. You know, Clay, we talked about, you know, last week, Ole Miss gets shut up by Alabama. You have to figure out ways to regroup. You know, events like this in a ball game, you know, they're going to continue to play this game. They're going to wish their teammates well, their teammate well. See Chris Frost coming over there to check with it, check on him, as is Anthony Swain, who will likely, number 43, be pressed into service with McKenzie, clearly not going to be available for the rest of this ball game. You see the Ole Miss players clapping in support. And now the challenge as coaches, you want your, your teammates, your players to empathize with their teammate and at the same time, they have to realize the medical staff has to do their job. Now they have to flip the switch and continue to go back and play this game, knowing that with each snap, this is a risk for having something like this happen. Casanova McKenzie has been lifted onto the cart that is going to take him to the locker room, and we expect they're going to take him for x-rays. As soon as we can, we're going to get an update on the sophomore linebacker. Sell out here in Auburn, Alabama, and he's going to get a giant round of applause. Again, it was the final play of the first quarter. McKenzie and Montrevious Adams were closing in on the Ole Miss quarterback, Bo Wallace. Adams got up. McKenzie didn't. And this is something that Auburn thought that they could do, that they needed to do, pressure the quarterback. And I'm convinced that regardless of the big body of Adams colliding with McKenzie, see his head when he comes into Bo Wallace. And his head snapped to the left. And I think he injured his neck. But at least that's what it appeared, of course, on that play when he ran into Bo Wallace's left hip. Third down and nine for Ole Miss. This will be the first play of the second quarter. They've got it at the 49 of Auburn. Down 10. Wallace to the outside. Jeff Scott drops it. <laughs> Fourth down. And he had obviously had Look Jeff up. Scott with Dante Moncrief locked up in man coverage, and Moncrief just ran the defender off. And Jeff Scott virtually unaccounted for out of the backfield. And now you see Auburn on their previous possession, a drop that cost them, forcing them to punt it away. And now Ole Miss having to punt the ball back to this Auburn offense. You said it before, Matt, that because of the tempo that Ole Miss wants to play at, they have to get first downs. And they've had three drops here tonight. This bounces at the 18-yard line, checks up. And Auburn will start at the 17, a 32-yard punt. Let's look at the game trends here tonight. And Ole Miss has had a drastic time of possession advantage here tonight. But they keep shooting themselves in the foot. Well, that turnover looms rather large when you think that it costs well, this Ole Miss team seven points. I'll tell you something else, though. Look at the yards per play. Auburn far more efficient with the plays that they've run. Almost a first down every single time they snap the ball. Third possession for Auburn and Corey Grant. He's listed as the number three running back for the Tigers, transferred from Alabama after the 2010 season. He picks up six, second down and four. Ohio State Northwestern getting underway right now. Washington and Stanford coming up at 10.30 Eastern on ESPN. 
Marshall the play fake, sets, throws, man wide open, it's the tight end, Brandon Fulz. And they can't connect. So now third and four. And that's on the quarterback, you know, Nick Marshall, he's got a wide open target. Fulz leaving, he's lined up as an H-back, unaccounted for. You can see Cody Pruitt, the safety rolling up to take the back out of the backfield, and Fulz just snuck out. That's six points if Marshall's able to put the ball on him. Good coverage in the secondary by Cody Pruitt. Sammy Coates, the intended receiver, and it's a quick three and out for Auburn as this defense for Ole Miss shows some salt, gets off the field quickly. Oh boy, I'll tell. I mean, quickly, not even a minute, 32 seconds about where they possess the football and give it right back to the Rebels. Both quarterbacks, though, a little bit off targeted, it seems. Ole Miss, obviously, it cost them a pick six with the missed throw by Bo Wallace to Robinson Therese, but Nick Marshall missing a wide open Brandon Fulce leading to this point away. Stephen Clark's punt fielded at the 31 by Jeff Scott. This Ole Miss offense has lacked some spark here tonight. Let's see if they can turn that around down 10. All right, Matt, thank you. Taj Boyd, yes, a great week in the Carrier Dome. But I, honorable mention goes, in my opinion anyways, to Jameis Winston, what he did against Maryland today. And I think we're going to start hearing more about Jameis Winston when it comes to the Heisman conversation going forward. Yeah, you know, we've already seen one freshman win the Heisman and Johnny Manziel a year ago. And these are eye-popping numbers that Jameis Winston's been able to put together so far. Wallace sets, throws deep. And he overshoots Logan. It's been a tough night for Bo Wallace in this Ole Miss offense. He is 10 of 18 now, 98 yards and an interception. They have shot themselves in the foot. Of course, that interception also returned for a touchdown. Last week, they struggled against Alabama. Came in averaging 38 points per game. They got shut out by the time. Seemed to lack some confidence now on this side of the ball. Second and ten. And now Wallace sacked. Ben Bradley. Jeff Whitaker, the starter. That defensive tackle out. That right knee injury indefinitely. And Bradley has been doing a pretty good job in his stead. You know, at that time, though, Ellis Johnson brought the blitz. Chris Frost, number 17, was the one that flushed Bo Wallace right into the arms of Ben Bradley. Actually, a short game for Wallace on that play, third and seven. Wallace being chased. First down catch, Treadwell. They'll move the chains. Let's go to down to Don for an injury update. Guys, Casanova McKenzie is a neck injury. Now, the good news, he has movement in all of his extremities. He was taken by ambulance to East good Alabama job, Medical boy, Center. Boy. That's in Opelika, about 20 minutes away. But the good news, movement in all extremities. That is good news. Thank you, Don. Wallace. Nowhere to run with Darius Owens, the defensive end. Drops him for a loss of one. And Hugh Freeze looking for answers on this side of the ball. He just ain't finding it right now. He's getting frustrated. Ladarius Owens, again, funneling the ball back towards the middle of the defense, denying Jeff Scott on the perimeter by getting it through. On second and 11, and now he underthrows Dante Moncrief. You know, that time, what Bo Wallace is looking for, Moncrief, whenever the defender's running stride for stride with you, the receiver knows. There's opportunity for a back shoulder throw. That time Chris Davis was hip to hip with Moncrief, and he never slammed on the brakes. And by the time that he did, the ball was already past him. This calls again for some more third down heroics. Last time moved the pocket. Dan Warner, offensive coordinator, cutting the field in half, but getting away from the pressure and allowing Bo Wallace and Moon to work. Pressure coming straight up the middle, picked up. Wallace complete 
Looks like he's short of the first down, though. Vince Sanders made the catch, but about a yard shy of the marker. You know, this Ole Miss offense, Hugh Freeze, he's not scared to go for it on fourth down. He's done it 12 times already this season. He's going to do it again here. Well, again, you see Ellis Johnson, obvious passing down, recognizing it's an opportunity to bring pressure, knowing that the protecting back in Jeff Scott's 165 pounds. And this time Ole Miss goes big again. There's Fuchs, the defensive lineman they bring in for the beef. And Brunetti comes in a quarterback. They were one for four last week on fourth down, and now Brunetti needs to call a timeout. Hugh Freeze and this offense First having trouble communicating. Oh, Miss. First timeout for Ole Miss. 12 minutes to go in the half. Here in Auburn tonight. Here's a look at our SEC greats brought to you by Regions Bank. Tonight we feature Cam Newton. 51 total touchdowns in the 2010 season, second all-time in SEC history. What a year. Won the Heisman, led the Tigers to their second national championship, now playing quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. Well, as talented as Cam Newton was, and all the great things that he could do, he might have been one of the greatest short yardage backs, quarterback, fullback, tailback, that I've ever seen. I don't know that he was ever denied on a third and short. Regions Bank SEC Greats Tour in Oxford, October 12th. Fourth and one out of the timeout. Brunetti will keep. He's got the first. Now there you go. Hugh Freeze, like he said, he will go for it on fourth down. Sometimes he comes up a loser. A lot of times he comes up a winner. Well, last week versus Alabama, he went for it on fourth down four times. Two of them in the red zone. It's nothing for Hugh Freeze to turn it into a four down territory, regardless of where they have the football on the field. Brunetti stays in there on the zone. Reed decides to keep and he gets dumped for a loss. It's Nosa Igwe, fourth tackle for loss tonight by this Auburn front. Brunetti comes out, Wallace comes back in. You know, and that's where. Freeze and Malzahn differ a little bit. We talked a lot about their similarities. Malzahn's a little more tight to the vest than Hugh. Oh, Hugh Freeze is, he's fast and loose. And look at Gus Malzahn, he's fast, but he's more focused. That offense is far more structured. Hugh Freeze, and part of it's a function of having a veteran quarterback, yeah. allows more decision-making after the snap by Bo Wallace. Quick strike to the outside, Treadwell. They have not found a lot of running room on that receiver screen out there tonight. Pick up a four, so third down for Ole Miss coming up. Third and long. Part of that's a function of Auburn's willingness to stay in man coverage. Relatively proximate to the line of scrimmage, there's not a lot of room for the receiver screen to gain momentum. Scott! He was dehorned as he tried to go up the middle. Igwe again, it's a loss of two, fourth down. Mosa Igwe, and this time playing inside, typically a defensive end position, and the back block by Swindle just doesn't get there. Swindall, offensive center, a veteran guy, just doesn't deny the penetration. Igwe gets upfield, then redirects quickly. I got a little piece of the face mask, got away with it. Oh, Miss, there's no chance that you go for it on fourth down here, and they punt it away. Third punt of the night for Tyler Campbell. Chance to pin Auburn deep. And can they keep it out of the end zone? No. Auburn gets a break. They'll start at the 25 when we come back. 13-3, Tigers, under 10 to go in the half. The Ole Miss punter, Tyler Campbell, thinking to himself, what do I got to do twice now? He's put it inside the five-yard line, but his coverage team hasn't been able to keep it out of the end zone, so Auburn will start this drive at the 20-yard line. Got to put more backspin on that wedge, man. You're going <laughs> to lob it down there. Apparently, you got to break it and stop it yourself. Both times, Ole Miss able to get all the way down there. I was sitting next to Abby last night <laughs> at Jungle Jam. Uh-huh. The basketball version here in Auburn of Midnight Madness. 
pretty talented. It's pretty trusting. Most storied conference of college athletics will live on a new network, the SEC Network, launching August 2014. For more information, go to getsecnetwork.com. Georgia beat Tennessee in overtime tonight. Under 10 minutes to go before half, Marshall. Leaves a couple of tacklers, picks up seven. SEC news and notes, 34-31. Winning on a field goal, Aaron Murray. Three touchdowns today. Florida is leading Arkansas. We'll come back to that after this play. Second down, Auburn. Trey Mason tried to bounce around. The tackler stayed on his feet and picks it up. That's a gain of four. I don't know how he stayed up. Chief Brown came in and put a good hit on him. All game long, Ole Miss has not had very good tackling. Looked like his elbow touched the ground. They say he was not down. Yeah, they're going to yeah. take a look at it. Yep. The ruling on the field of a first down is under further review. Yeah, it looked to me like Mason, uh, great effort, no question about it, but it looked to me like when Chief Brown took his legs out, you know, your elbow or your knee can establish you as a ball carrier as down, and you'll see he goes low and see his right elbow. Well, he's definitely down shy of the first down yardage. But regardless, even on the previous play, you know, we've looked at this ball game. One of one of the key players for Ole Miss, we felt needed to have a good game was Sir Darius Bryant, and twice he's had a hard time getting Marshall on the ground. There, Chief Brown gets just enough to get Trey Mason established as down. But that elbow is definitely on the turf. Ole Miss plays that 4-2-5 base defense just like Auburn. Again, the similarities with these two teams uncanny. It starts with the head coaches, but then it goes to the defense. Here's another look. The challenge coming from the replay booth. John Bible is the replay official tonight. Uh, right there. I mean, that, I think it's pretty clear. That's a good challenge from the booth. They keep an eye. They review plays. They do their best, and, and with two high-octane, up-tempo offenses, it's a challenge. And I think the replay booth was right. That certainly warranted a second look, and clearly Mason's elbow is down, which establishes him, would establish him down once it touches the turf, shy of that first down yardage. And I think some of this conversation, Clay, is about the spot. I want to make sure that they reset the ball, not so much whether or not that elbow is down. After further review, the ruling is the runner's elbow was down at, with the ball at the 28 and a half yard line. It'll be third down, one and a half yards to go at the 28 and a half yard line. So instead of a first down, now a tough third down situation for the Tigers. And they are 0 for 2 tonight on third down. This is a, a third and short yardage scenario, though something that Auburn is better equipped for with their offensive front and the size of their backs. Mason got it. Let's go back to those SEC news and notes. Florida 10-7 on top of Arkansas right now in what I'm sure is a very physical, fast-paced game. Both of those teams keep it on the ground a lot. LSU leading Mississippi State 21-16. Zach Mettenberger having a great year at quarterback for LSU. Trey Mason, short pickup. It's going to bring up second down. It's actually going to be a loss on the play. It's a loss of one second down and 11. This time it's a rundown blitz that Dave Womack draws up. Watch Mike Mary shoot the gap, and he's in the backfield right now, and that's just enough to disrupt the rhythm of that play. And so Darius Bryant 
Mary's off, uh, linebacking mate was able to come in and clean it up. Complete. And a great hit. Mike Hilton, the cornerback who leads Ole Miss in tackles for loss, really put a punishing blow on the receiver. It's a gain of five for Marcus Davis. And now third and six. Marshall takes off, finds a seam, first down, and he's across midfield. We've seen him make a couple of really good decisions, and he is proving to his coach that he can run with the football. You see the flexibility, too. They motion cross into the backfield to give it a play-action look. After the 17-yard gain, they go back to the steady Trey Mason to the 45-yard line. You see Marshall off the play in action to Trey Mason. Mason's downfield. You see him downfield. He recognizes the quarterback's in trouble. And he's going to run. He swaps the defense just enough. So Darius Bryant hammers Mason. Hard-earned four yards for Mason. Bryant making the tackle. You see Mason. It's just a lead play behind Cross again. Elston's there. To trip him up, to trip Mason up, but Brian once again stepping up his play. Third and two, Mason churning ahead, picks up another first down for Auburn. They keep the drive alive. Robert Kimdichi, who's been pretty quiet tonight for the Rebels, makes the tackle. Well, Kimdichi, they move him around tonight. He's been over the tackle in a defensive end position. Last week played inside right here. Marshall left all alone. First down and more. To the 10 yard line. He faked out the free safety, Cody Pruitt. A gain of 26 for Nick Marshall. We talk about the perimeter run game for all Miss. And this time, check that. I saw that Bill Kim Dietzy was at the top of the screen. And he closes as if Marshall gave to the running back, and instead he pulls it and gets wide open on the edge. Now Cam Rashardus Payne is going to take his turn. Game of six. Nick Marshall now. Four carries for 79 yards. All four of those runs have been big plays. And you know, coming into the game, Nick Marshall didn't have that many designed QB runs, only 12 of them given the fact that he's so mobile, but he's making them count tomorrow. Twelfth play of this drive for Auburn. Leading by ten, five and a half to go before halftime. See the red zone for Auburn this year. They like to keep it on the ground when they get inside the 20. Marshall walks in, untouched touchdown. to three Auburn that was their second drive of 80 yards for a touchdown tonight well and on the first one it was Nick Marshall who was able to get out on the perimeter to pick up big yardage if it's an intended pass he pulls it down to convert and he's able to get on the edge to convert three for three on third down Nick Marshall getting it down after much discussion and prayer to attend the University of Ole Miss. Robert Kendici, the nation's number one high school recruit last year, but right now 
His Rebels are down 20 to 3. Kim Dietschy, Tunsil, Treadwell, Connor, and Golson all making an impact right away for the Rebels. And Gus Melzahn brought in some great talent this past year, too. You know, the idea of needing young guys like Laquan Treadwell, Laramie Tunsil, the fact that they're contributing and playing well is good, but that's a blessing and a curse. What you don't want is to have to play your freshman talent. You don't want to be scared of it either. Walton takes an eight. Third touchback for Auburn tonight. And Kim Dietschy got blocked on that last drive. Here he is, a defensive end. He's going to play underneath. Just gets caved down. Mike Mary is the one at number 38 who gets sucked inside. Allows Jay Prosh to block two, really. You can't afford to have that. Nick Marshall just walks into the end zone. But Kim Dietschy, you know, they see that zone read a lot in practice. But he's still a young football player, a talented one at that. And at the same time, you can't simulate game reps. You can only get it one game at a time, one snap at a time. And twice there, that time it was by scheme, but previously got beat on the edge, collapsing down, allowing Nick Marshall out of the gate. Seen a lot of Barry Brunetti, the backup quarterback for Ole Miss in this football game. Hands off, Mathers. Ran into a wall at the line of scrimmage and then bounced it to the outside for a pickup of 13. He is their biggest tail back at 5'11", 189. And that's not saying much. No, it? it's I mean, not. You're talking about 189 pounds. You know, Auburn, all three backs close to or over 200 pounds. That's a luxury when you need short yard situations or a physical run to go somewhere else other than your quarterback. Out of time on the clock. Ole Miss has two timeouts remaining. They need something on this drive. Brunetti wants to throw. Jalen Walton. Makes the catch, but he is drilled by Anthony Swain, the weak side linebacker. It's a gain of three. Second down and seven. You see Anthony Swain. He's in the ball game due to the injury to Casanova McKenzie. Great concentration to make this completion and a nice shot by Swain on Walton. What do you make of Hugh Freeze playing Brunetti this much? We haven't seen him this much in the first half all year. I think he wants that physical run presence. Walton. And it'll bring up third down and manageable as we close in on four minutes. You know, it's important, though, when you do that, when you put Barry Brunetti in the ball game, that he attempts a pass or two, especially if you intend to give him a bigger package. This entire series, it appears, is intended to be Barry Brunetti's. He's only attempted 13 passes prior to that one. Ole Miss is four of nine on third down tonight. Brunetti will run it. And he stopped short of the first down. About two and a half yards short. The middle linebacker, Jake Holland, the third-year starter, gets to Brunetti. It's a gain of just one. And another fourth down decision for Hugh Freeze. <laughs> Hugh Freeze, Gus Malzahn, good friends. Both coached at Arkansas State before getting their opportunity to be head coaches in the SEC. Well, gamesmanship there, left Barry Brunetti in there and then sent Bo Wallace on with brand new personnel. Deep down the middle, man open. Treadwell makes the catch and he's hauled down inside the 25 yard line by Therese. It's a gain of 30. Treadwell able to just get behind Therese. I think he got caught with his eyeballs either in the backfield or on the back who scattered out into the flats. Either way, Treadwell open downfield. Walton. Dropped back behind the line of scrimmage by Lawson. And Gabe Wright in on the play, too. He got the start tonight at defensive tackle. It's a loss of two. Second down at 12. So Ole Miss already within Andrew Ritter's field goal range. He'd love to get in the end zone here before halftime. 2.10 to go and two timeouts remaining. 
Walton tried to cut it back and slipped down. It's a short pickup. Ryan Smith, the field safety, making the stop. So now a big third down coming up here for Ole Miss. Third and long. And Auburn has done an excellent job of muddying the reads for Bo Wallace. You see the third downs. Oh, six yards to go. That's obviously a, a distinct challenge for any offense. Incidentally, that's kind of what Ole Miss has gotten used to this season. Difficulties on first and second down to get third and manager. Wallace hit from behind and dropped by Carl Lawson. Part of that great recruiting class for Gus Malzahn this offseason. Hugh Freeze incensed on this play, and it's because Jalen Walton, see right up here, he's the safety valve. There's nothing open downfield, but there's also nowhere to go. The backhand in the backfield he was unlikely to get the needed yardage, but he gets tackled. He's obviously an eligible receiver. Timeout. Hugh Freeze. The field goal unit was ready to set up for Andrew Ritter. It will be a 44 yard attempt if Hugh Freeze decides to kick a field goal. 46 seconds to go before halftime. Ole Miss has one timeout left. It's been a tough night for this Ole Miss offense. Wallace sacked by the freshman. Hugh Freeze incensed. Hi, Matty. Thank you. Hugh Freeze, during that timeout, spent most of it talking to the officials, not his players. These are just these are words of encouragement for the officials <laughs> on the field. Just <laughs> want to make sure that you're seeing things the way I'm seeing it. We're giving them a little bit of direction. All of this is about that third down play. Bo Wallace ends up getting sacked. But Hugh Freeze is saying you can't tackle my running back as an eligible receiver. D Ford just took Jalen Walton to the ground. 44 yard attempt for Ritter. He has already hit tonight from 42. Out of the hold of Chris Connolly. Got it. So Ritter is two for two, and Ole Miss does get points out of the drive. You get the fourth down conversion, and this time they're able to get something out of it as opposed to having to punt the football away. Another gutsy call on fourth down to even get to that scoring opportunity. Hugh Freeze, Gus Melzon. Two coaches who produced the most successful two-year span in program history at Arkansas State. And Don is down on the field with the man who hired him. You got it, Dean Lee. Pretty good track record hiring two guys there. What characteristics did you see in both of those guys that made you want to hire? Well, both, both coaches were on a lot of people's radar. Obviously, with you freeze and blindside, everybody knew about him. And then, of course, Gus. Gus has been out there for a while with his offensive mind. And, you know, when we were looking at coaches, we wanted somebody up-tempo, fast-paced, and somebody that did the no-huddle. And obviously, these are two, two of some of the best in the country, right? here tonight so much has been said about their similarities but what I want to know is their differences you got to work with both of them what did you see well I think with you the first thing that just pops out he's a man of faith you know he, he his whole thing is about relationships and he builds you know a, a family in his everything he does and everybody participates and has ownership and, and just a very class act for Gus, Gus is very focused. I mean, he he's on point. You know, it may not be too popular here at Auburn, but he's very saving-like, very methodical in the things that he does uh, with uh, with his focus and with his vision. Dean Lee, thank you so much. You can see the difference there in the way they run their teams. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Tom. Dean Lee here in a show of support for the two men he hired at Arkansas State. Two 10-win seasons and two Sun Belt Conference titles. For Hugh Freeze and Gus Malzahn, respectively. Trey Mason brings it out of the end zone for Auburn and gets to the 15 and out of bounds with 34 seconds to go before half. Hugh Freeze was a successful high school coach, as was Gus Malzahn. That's where they first got noticed before making the move to college, and coincidentally, both used Jonesboro, Arkansas as a jumping off point to the SEC. You know, so much overlap between both of these coaches. And we talked about you know, similar philosophies from an offensive standpoint. Both of them 
very engaged in the offensive side of the ball, but different approaches, different mentality. You know, it's interesting to hear Dean Lee break down how they approach building the program at large and how Gus Malzahn, more focused, more reserved, and Hugh Freeze, a little bit more gregarious, and it looks that way on the field. It's as if their personalities are taken on by their team. That's going to do it for the first half. Auburn with a 20 to 6 lead. Nick Marshall, a junior college transfer quarterback. Five for nine, 49 through the air. He was more impressive with his feet. They yeah, make great decisions on the zone read. Obviously, a couple of overthrows. They had a couple of drops. But when he got the big runs, that's what triggered the long drives for touchdown. Don's with Coach Malzon. Coach, two long touchdown drives there. How, how do you evaluate Nick Marshall's play in the first half? Well, you know, we, we missed a, a little pass there, but he's done a very good job operating our offense, especially on the ground, made a couple plays with his feet. And then defensively, you just give up two field goals. What's been the key to their success? Our defense is doing a great job because they got a lot of explosive guys. Uh, Coach Johnson mixing it up right there, and our guys have really responded. Coach Hazan, appreciate the time. Thank you. So there you have it, the first half in the books. Auburn leading 20 to 6 here at home tonight. Now we go to the studio. Matt Schick for the ESPNU College Football Halftime Report. Thank you, Clay. Nice first half for the Auburn Tigers leading Old Miss 20 to 6. We are at halftime. Just a gorgeous night in Auburn. The fans here on the Plains are enjoying it. It's 20 to 6. Tigers as we get ready for the start of the second half. Tropical Storm Karen might move in here later tonight, but right now it is absolutely perfect. And the Tigers with a two-touchdown lead. Gus Malzahn telling you and I this week that we've got to run the ball to have our best chance to beat Ole Miss here tonight, and so far they've done that. Well, they've got rushing yards out of the tailback position, the running back position, rather, and also the quarterback position, and it's really been on the same run in the first series where it's a zone to the right and the quarterback read to keep it. The first time he keeps it, this time he gives it to Trey Mason. And then again on the goal line, Marshall doing an excellent job of deciding whether to give it to the running back or to keep the ball himself. And it has hurt this Ole Miss defense vitally. When you look at it already, a lot of success running to the left side of that Auburn offensive front. But Nick Marshall and his decision making in the run game, offensive Offensively, really, the passing game hasn't gotten on track, but doesn't have to because of the rushing props. First half stats brought to you by John Deere. And Ole Miss dominated time of possession in the first half. Won the total offense battle, but they're not leading on the scoreboard. And Auburn will start with the football here in the second half. It's a short kick, and it's out of bounds. Andrew Ritter, the senior, usually pretty sure-footed, kicks it out. Let's go down to Don Davenport. We have to be more disciplined on defense. That's what head coach Hugh Freeze said about his guys. He said that they're not finding Nick Marshall with their eyes, and that's where they need to be more disciplined because he's an athlete and he's going to get them. Now, offensively, he said you're seeing a little bit more of Brunetti because they feel like he's more effective running the ball than Bo Wallace is, and they think that they can get some yards during that. I see if Brunetti starts here in the second half, but right now Nick Marshall and the Auburn offense ready to go to work. We'll throw on first down. It's a screen to Ricardo Lewis, his first touch. He has had pass catching problems this year. Golson and Connor converge on the tackle as it's a loss of two on the play. Second down and 12. Marshall in that first half, six of 10 for 47 yards passing. Cameron Artis Payne. In the backfield as Marshall checks at the line. Boy, that almost looked like a busted play, and Sinquez Golson almost picked Marshall off and took it back to the house. Marshall 
spun around, and there was nobody there to hand the ball off. Well, that play seemed like it was doomed from the start. You'll see you know, Sinquez Golson, his eyes are in the backfield all the way. They're trying to get the ball to Quan Bray. And Nick Marshall, who throws well on the run, that's an ill advised throw, but you could hear Gus Malzahn screaming some formational adjustments. Come back with a Sammy Coates. Good run after the catch. Spins his way across the midfield stripe. But there's a penalty marker down. Cody Pruitt makes a tackle after a gain of 17. There have not been a lot of penalty flights tonight. And the officials might not working. That's Mark Curls, our referee. And it's Greg Robinson with a holding call to left tackle. It was a surefire way of notice. The guy throwing his hands up like I never did anything after the play. Greg Robinson, the left tackle. And this is a little screen. See that? I mean, they call him tackle for a reason. He tries to tackle Mike Hilton, realizing that he has to get a, something on him to be able to spring that screen pass. Greg Robinson, it's a pretty good left tackle, but there in space, we were playing, trying to block a pretty good athlete. Marshall. Hit high, hit low. Sir Darius Bryant cleans him up. Cameron Wiggum also on the tackle. It's a gain of four for Marshall, and it'll be fourth down as Ole Miss's defense is able to get off the field. We've seen it so many times. It's, it's not just with this Auburn possession, but in the first half, of course, whenever these offenses, that they kind of accumulate. They kind of stack on themselves as you run more and more plays, and a penalty takes them completely out of that. Stephen Clark on to punt. Jeff Scott back to return. Pressure. Clark gets it away. Fair catch called for at the 24-yard line by Scott. We'll see what the adjustments are for Ole Miss. As they have now gone six quarters straight without a touchdown in the state of Alabama. Well, part of it's a function of this passing game that really hasn't gotten rolling. Obviously, pick six. Laquan Treadwell having difficulty coming up with catches. They've tried to hit Jeff Scott out on the edge. There really hasn't been a lot of consistency. We're coming into this game. And I felt as if that was an area where Ole Miss could really take advantage of their playmakers on the perimeter. Wallace will start the half. Flares it out to Jalen Walton. And he's wrapped up at the 29-yard line by Jermaine Whitehead who moved from corner to safety this season. It's a gain of five, second and five. <laughs> Seen two quarterbacks tonight. Barry Brunetti played quite a bit in the first half. Don asked you freeze about that. He is the more accomplished runner. Although Wallace keeps it here. And he's got what looks like a first down. And that one was more of an option type of a look. You know, they've got two backs in the backfield the last couple of plays for Ole Miss. We saw Barry Brunetti in the first half, and it's because of his ability to run the football. Not that Bo Wallace isn't effective, but Brunetti, a bigger guy, a bigger body, and also takes some of those shots that you know that your passer and Bo Wallace doesn't have to take. Wallace has time to throw, now steps out of the pocket. Going the wrong way, and he throws it away. Wallace did throw an interception in the first half. This time, makes no mistake. No more than anything else, you know, this, the coverage of the Auburn secondary, one that, you know, after visiting with Coach Johnson, defensive coordinator for Auburn, he mentioned how comfortable he is with his coverage ability, with his capability that he has in the roster that's available to him in the secondary. There's nowhere to go with the football. Bo Wallace is scrambling around trying to keep plays alive to extend the route. Scott over the middle. Picks up eight, so now third down and two for the Rebels. The sovereign defense is playing without the services 
a Casanova McKenzie, the starting weak side linebacker, taking taken off the field in the first half on a cart. Good news is he was moving his extremities before being taken to the hospital. And now Wallace goes down. Lawson, the freshman with the sack. Eight tackles for loss tonight by this Auburn defense. And what they've done is they've stood up the defensive end. What Lawson did, he stand up as a defensive end position, gets upfield to keep Wallace from wanting to give it to Jalen Walton on the outside. Wallace pulls it and tries to come underneath, and Lawson's able to play both. That's Tecmo Bowl type stuff. It's not often you see a defensive end that plays both. Going for it on fourth down for the third time, and they convert for the third time. Here goes Jeff Scott. One man to beat. And he is caught by Jonathan Mincy. A 54-yard run by Scott. And all this was, they fake the handoff to the fullback and then just flip it out to Jeff Scott. The defense commits to that dive play. And Jeff Scott has already outflanked the defenders. And once again, the gamble of Hugh Freeze, it only resulted in a field goal in the first half. Now their first real scoring opportunity to get in the end zone. Brunetti comes in. He's been their goal line quarterback all year. He'll get one. Let's go back to the run by Scott. Jeff Scott, he's got some Jeffs. Look at this ball boy. That kid, he's probably still in middle school. He's got some eligibility. I get a couple of. We might get some offers off of that. <laughs> stride for stride. Oh, he looks older than middle school. That's, that's not a ball boy. That's Second that's down and goal down. It's a grad student at Ole Miss. Wallace back in. Play clock inside of five. And they did not get it off in time, or did they get a timeout call? First charge they timeout, did. Ole Miss. Ole Miss, fortunately, was able to get time called before the play clock expired. You can see, you know, Ole Miss is jockeying quarterbacks in and out. Bo Wallace a little bit frustrated, but they got to get dialed in knowing that they're on the doorstep of their first touchdown in this ball game. And Hugh Freeze wants to talk about it and take advantage of this opportunity. In the red zone, they were 0 for 2 last week at Alabama. 0 for 1 so far tonight. Trying to score on this opening series of the second half. And to make this a one touchdown game. Second and goal. Wallace incomplete. Threw it behind Moncrief. Well covered. Third and goal. So Hugh Freeze is frustrated. The inability to really get Dante Moncrief more involved in the offense. They've gone to him a couple of times on back shoulder throws where Moncrief is unable to slam on the brakes and come back for the football. And Freeze has opted to go back with Barry Brunetti at the quarterback position. He's got three rushing touchdowns this year. Reverse, and now Treadwell to throw to the end zone. Out of bounds. Intended for Brunetti. Treadwell, I think, was hit while he was in the process of getting rid of it. Yeah, Ladarius Owens, a defensive end. You know, he never really collapsed. It didn't look like on the play fake. And see him get upfield. You know, Treadwell, he had an interception last week on yep. an ill-advised throw on a similar play. I'm a little surprised that that's what Ole Miss went to. Well, the Brunetti could probably chip away at the yardage needed. Ritter, two for two tonight, hits from 22. And Ole Miss has to settle for three again. They scored on the last drive of the first half, score on the first drive of the second half. And a lot of tailgating before the game here tonight in Auburn. And lead is 11 now for the Tigers. It's a small community here, but a big alumni base.
and they really turn out for this program, especially now that Gus Malzahn is in charge. Just look at the statistics with 9.45 left here in the third quarter. That time of possession really standing out for Ole Miss, but again, they've only been able to get field goals out of it. Yeah, they've had to gamble a couple of times on fourth downs, and they've got it, but keep in mind, Ole Miss, they've run 60 offensive plays already in this ballgame. We've got nine minutes to play in the third quarter. And they're two minutes shy of their usual time of possession over four quarters of play. The whole point is this Auburn defense, considering that Casanova McKenzie is out. Jeff Whitaker's been out for the season. They're already thin on that defensive front. And now Montrevious Adams looks like he's not going to return. Yeah, Montrevious Adams did not show up at all on that last defensive series for Auburn. The Atlanta Football Classic is coming up tonight between North Carolina AT and South Carolina State. ESPN News College Football presented by McDonald's tonight at 10:30 on ESPNU, also live on Watch ESPN. A 10 play, 71 yard drive in three and a half minutes for Ole Miss. Scott, the big 54 yard run on fourth down. As you take a look at Montrevious Adams, he had his helmet off throughout that entire last Auburn, series for Auburn defensively. Tigers start at the 25 after the touchback. Marshall, keeper, and it's a short game. Give him two. Bryant and Kimdichie, Denzel Kimdichie, making the tackle. Hey, there's Casanova McKenzie. He doesn't have his shoulder pads, and he's in a cervical collar there, but that is good news to see him back out here out of the locker room. That's a, that's a beautiful sight. You see a kid like that with a neck injury walking around. Probably got a real bad stinger down both of his arms, but he looks like he's going to be fine. Marshall to throw, has a man open. It's Trey Mason along the sideline. To the 39-yard line of Ole Miss. What a weapon he has been for the Tigers tonight. It's a gain of 35. Off the play fake, and that buys the linebackers on the ride, on the read, and then they get the ball downfield to Trey Mason, who just slips behind the coverage of Cody Pruitt. And now he'll run. Lowers his head and gets inside the 35. Now you can see Auburn. They're right back over the football. They want to run another play. That big play kind of opening up the tempo, the pace play. Screen, Bray steps out of one tackle, dragged down at the 31 by Chief Brown. Let's go down to Don. Yeah, guys, Montrevious Adams, the freshman defensive lineman, out for the rest of the game. Not going to see him anymore with a left knee injury. Wow. Already shorthanded the sovereign defense, now even more so. On second and six, first down, Trey Mason. At least I thought so. They may need a measurement. Nope, they're going to move the chains. First down at the 29 of Ole Miss. Marshall keeps it. Out at the 11. Marshall really putting Gus Malzahn's worries to rest tonight here about his ability to, to run. Uh, you know, it's, it's been very similar plays over and over again. That time making the read very, very simple for Marshall. And Mason again. Marshall eight carries for 108 yards and a touchdown. His rushing ability really starting to manifest itself in this game. We've seen this movie before. We haven't stopped this play, and so Gus Malzahn goes right back to it. He'll keep it again. Same play as two plays ago, and he busts inside the five. So now third down, and they can pick up a first down at the one. What is Gus going to do here? Well, you know, he's, got the, he's had success with the same play three downs in a row. He's summing out Trey Mason and bringing in Grant for the 
to play out wide for speed more than anything else, challenging Womack to substitute himself. But I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a QB run. He sends Grant in motion behind him. Fakes the handoff to him, keeps it. Touchdown, Nick Marshall. What an impressive drive for the junior quarterback. They've had two 80-yard drives, now a 75-yard drive. It's 27 to 9. Marshall had 29 yards rushing on that series. Talk about Marshall, what he can do with his running ability. They fake it to Grant on the give, and Marshall once again trusting his own ability to make plays, not only moving the Auburn offense down the field, but also getting them into the end zone. Nick Marshall taking it in from five yards out, capping a nine-play, 75-yard drive in a little over three minutes to make it 27 to nine, Auburn. They have really got the number 24 team in the country in trouble here tonight. And a bowl game would be huge for this team. Nick Marshall, the junior college transfer, has his team poised right now to pick up its fourth win of the year. As Jalen Walton brings it out near the 20-yard line. And there's still winnable games in Auburn's schedule. You talk about Western Carolina and FAU. But there's still a lot of time for Ole Miss, but they have shown no sign stench of getting going here offensively. Well, you know, they've moved the ball, but then they get down into the red zone, and, and regardless of the gambles that they take, the conversions they get on fourth down, and then the drive will stall out. And they end up with these field goal attempts. Meanwhile, Auburn getting a contribution from the defensive side of the ball, but they're cashing in for six on their offensive possessions. Wallace to a wide open Jamez Logan got behind the defense for a 33 yard reception into Auburn territory at the 48 yard line. That time just confusion in the Auburn secondary. Jermaine Whitehead didn't recognize you see still frustrated allowing Jamez Logan to get behind. I don't know what the confusion was. Looked like it was his all the way. Wallace has time. Now it's tipped and nearly intercepted. A couple of Tigers had their hands on it. Chris Frost, number 17, had a paw on it. Nearly picked off Wallace for the second time. See Bo Wallace, he had problems with tip balls last week. Four or five different occasions. Crucial moments where the Crimson Tide got their hands up. And tonight, they're almost a near interception. When that ball gets tipped up in the air, that offense holds its breath, knowing that defenders are closing. Frost tipped it. Alexander nearly hauled it in for the pick. And now timeout. Ole Miss Second calling a charge, timeout. timeout. Ole Miss. They have one remaining. There's a lot of game left. We're going to take a timeout to 27 to 9. Ole Miss sputtering on offense again tonight. Good one in the Pac-12 tonight. Number 15, Washington. Number 5, Stanford. 10:30 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. David Shaw, the coach of Stanford, very impressive. Still a young man, early 40s. As a quarterback coach with the Raiders when you were playing for the Oakland Raiders and something that he may be 
heading back to the NFL. I mean, the NFL would love a young coach like that who's had great success, the kind he's had at Stanford. Yeah, you know, he's earned it. He's earned his stripes. So his dad, Willie Shaw, defensive coordinator, a long time, D coordinator in the NFL. And David Shaw, a lot of people thought that Stanford program would drop off when Jim Harbaugh left off. That hadn't been the case at all. Out of a timeout, second and ten, Wallace. Pocket collapses, steps up, heaves it deep downfield, caught by Moncrief. Dante Moncrief makes a juggling catch for a 51-yard touchdown. Just what Ole Miss needed. Right when you think that maybe Bo Wallace's confidence is a little bit shaken, how are you going to get your playmaker and Dante Moncrief involved in the ball game? We come right back to him. And he makes a fingertips catch. Quick three play, 80 yard drive for Ole Miss. And they're right back in this one. It's 27 to 16. A moment there, it looked like things were unraveling so bad that Auburn may run away with this, but then Moncrief with a big play. Oh, this is a pocket pass. Bo Wallace just found a way to keep the play alive long enough and keep his eyes downfield and his playmaking receiver. And Dante Moncrief adjusting to the ball in the air. You can see him having to flatten out his route. Look at the concentration by the big man. And there's the trigger man right there in Bo Wallace. And he needed that completion. That was an important yep. one. For this Ole Miss offense, not only do you get the score, but that's a breath of life, a little bit of energy to the sideline. First touchdown for Ole Miss in seven quarters, the better part of seven quarters. They're, they're more than due. And you could see coming into this ball game, prior to Alabama, one of the better red zone offenses in the, in the conference. They get blanked a game ago, 0 for 2 in red zone opportunities. Having going for going forward on fourth down and tonight really only away able to come away when they get into the scoring area with with field goals. And this one it just took a bomb. Bo Wallace just hangs it up. Now there's the Auburn crowd tensing up a little bit. After that big play. Trey Mason will take an E. Third touchback for Ritter. Quest for the coaches trophy presented by Dr. Pepper, Hugh Freeze. Oxford born, Mississippi bred, took the Rebels to a bowl game in year one. Done amazing things, especially on the recruiting trail, which we talked about earlier. Because of that, this program has a bright future. Things have not gone real well tonight, save that last play, but. All in all, Hugh Freeze has done wonderful things for this Ole Miss football team. Well, he's reinvigorated the program. We talked about it a season ago. It wasn't until the Auburn game and that victory where Ole Miss was able to get off the slide in their SEC schedule, their first SEC win. Corey Grant looking for operating room near this sideline. He is shut down after a gain of three by Milk Hilton. We'll see how Auburn responds after the Ole Miss touchdown. Kyle Frazier lined up as a receiver to the right. Pass is caught by Marcus Davis. Just a short game, so now a third down. And Auburn tonight on third down. 4.5 yards to go has been the average. We've got more than that now. You can see they're only 50% in converting this distance to go. They've done a better job than they have thus far this season in getting into a third and manageable yardage. Now that said, we've seen Nick Marshall tonight already take a play that's broken down in the passing game and convert with his legs when the pocket collapses. Mason hit behind the line of scrimmage and he goes down a loss of one Lewis coming up and making the hit now fourth down 
It's a great play. Greg Robinson from his left tackle position was trying to get out in front. Again, a screen pass. This is the one that Trey Mason broke early in the game where Robinson was flagged for holding. This time, he's not able to get out there quickly enough. Lewis able to get upfield, make a key open field tackle. After the touchdown, Dave Womack's defense did exactly what they needed to do. Get off on third down, a quick defensive series, and now they get the ball back. Fourth punt for Stephen Clark tonight. Fair catch called for at the 30. So halfway decent field position for Ole Miss, too. With 3.53 to go here in the third quarter. And here's this Ole Miss offense as it takes the field. Plenty of energy, and there should be. Now the question will be, what is this Auburn defense feeling like having faced 63 offensive plays? You give up a big touchdown. Your offense barely possesses the football and then kicks it right back to the Rebels and giving them another crack at your end zone. Now, albeit a 70-yard football field, Stephen Clark giving Ellis Johnson's unit yardage to defend, but they've got to be wearing down. Scott Dump lost it too. D Ford. The defensive end for Auburn there. You can see the time of possession that you were alluding to, how it has been in Ole Miss's favor all game. This defense has to be gassed. Unless there's a quarter to play, they've almost possessed the ball as much as they typically do over four quarters. Wallace comes up firing and completed the 42 to Logan. Jamez Logan now five catches. That one for 14. We've seen this route before. Wallace able to get it to Logan. Nice hands, good concentration, completing the completion in front of Chris Davis. Five catches for 92 yards for the senior. This offense coming to life now. Wallace handles the snap. Incomplete, went to Moncrief again for the big play. Couldn't haul it in. Jonathan Mincy, pretty good coverage there on Moncrief. Now that's a ball that Dante Moncrief, he expects to make this catch. His quarterback expects him to make this catch. You know, you see it, Mincy, he swipes at the football, but it gets to Moncrief cleanly. And that's a catch that he usually makes. That was the fourth drop for a miss tonight. Wallace on the hoof can't get to the 45 yard line before Chris Davis who's back off an injury makes the tackle and now a third down situation again for the Rebels and so third and long third and seven you know, what that drop created was a drop back passing situation something that Ole Miss isn't very comfortable in you know, they like to move the pocket they like to run play action Wallace tackled by Lawson. Wow, has the freshman been active tonight on that Auburn defensive front? As much difficulty as Ole Miss has had, Auburn has played very well at the defensive end position. And watch Lawson. He gets upfield and forces the key. This is twice now where he has forced the ball to go back inside and makes the tackle. We're going for it on fourth and five. Ole Miss is three for three tonight in this situation. It's going to be close. Jeff Scott made the catch, but it appears he's a yard short. Ryan Smith, the safety, made the tackle, and Ole Miss will give it over on downs. We talked about how Hugh Freeze, you know, he trusts his offense. They've had great success tonight on fourth down. Were it not for a great open field tackle by Ryan Smith to come up and close on Jeff Scott out of the backfield, and they get the yardage. But this is just sure open field tackling. We talked about the cover skills. We talked about some of these passes defended. But Auburn defensively has done an excellent job with their tackling as well all night long. Something we can't say for this Ole Miss defensive unit. Cameron Artis Payne pick up 
three or four on first down. That defense for Auburn, Matt. A slow starter at times this year, but as the games go on, they seem to get stronger, especially in the fourth quarter. They haven't given up a score at all in the fourth quarter this year. And that bodes well as they've got a nice lead now of 11 points. Yeah, they'll give up yards, but they don't give up points. They find ways to get stops in the red zone. They've had four turnovers generated when teams get in the red zone area. And Ellis Johnson has done a good job of rolling players in to keep them fresh. Trey Mason, he's had a spectacular night. He's got a first down and more. Out at the 36-yard line. A gain of 12 for the junior Auburn running back. Tell you what, that's some pretty nifty ball handling out of Nick Marshall. Something we talked about with the coaches, what you do during the bye week. Not only did they get healthy, but they went back to some of the fundamentals, keeping in mind you know, Nick Marshall started his career in college as a defensive back. Now he's being asked to run the zone read offense. He's done a good job here tonight. Mason again. Second down. Gain of four. Four, second down Auburn is going to let the quarter expire. And they'll take an 11 point lead into the fourth. Twenty-seven, sixteen. These Auburn Tigers and the faithful here at Jordan Hare Stadium starting to feel it. Winner of this game goes to four and one. Go to the fourth quarter. Auburn leading at twenty-seven to sixteen. Number twenty-four, Ole Miss. And trouble again tonight on offense. The road has been tough on Ole Miss this year because they've been on the road. Fourth road game in the first five weeks. In the last two weeks, I think we're seeing the signs of a road weary Rebels team. It'll wear on you after a while. You're traveling. Not an easy place to play here tonight. Certainly last week. Tuscaloosa versus the number one team in the country in Alabama. Marshall get out of there. A first down inside the 20 yard line. Auburn knocking on the door again. It's a 15 yard run for the quarterback. This one almost, I wonder if he made the wrong read. He ends up following Trey Mason into the hole. Either way, whether it's a broken play or by design, Marshall tonight has been magnificent in the run game. Well, that's going to be a loss, and it's fumble. Picked up by Ole Miss. Denzel Kimdichie with a 25-yard fumble return for the Rebels. His second game back off of a knee sprain, and it's a big play for Ole Miss. First turnover tonight for Auburn. It's the second time Dave Womack has run this. It's a Mike will twist and you'll see kim dicci he comes free mike mary comes up in the field now it's mary that comes free as does kim dicci mary forces the fumble he's right there at the mesh point we just got done talking about how cleanly nick marshall has operated the zone read scheme hard to do that when you've got a mike linebacker in the lap. now wallace Sacked inside the 35 by the defensive tackle, Gabe Wright. Well, we talk about the youth that's playing. This is a freshman, Austin Golson, right here at right guard. And Gabe Wright's just going to hit him with an arm over. Austin Golson's got way too much weight forward, and Gabe Wright just slips right past him. That's enough to knock some of the momentum right out of their sails. And that's dropped by Moncrief. Incomplete. 
It's about third and 19. They had their best starting field position of the night at the 45-yard line, and they're wasting this opportunity. We're talking about the youth. We're talking about young guys playing. You get a quick change. You hustle them out on the field. Results in a sack. Moncrief, the last two times that Ole Miss has gone to him, though, unable to make the reception. And I think he's banged up. Maybe hurt his hand in that last attempt. They are four for 14 tonight on third down. That's what they were against Alabama, too. Pressure. Wallace steps up. Hit and dunked. Fourth sack tonight for this Auburn defense. This time it's D4. Auburn is really enjoying having D Ford back in this lineup. Now, this isn't to say that the pressure is getting back there. This is not a very good pass rush. Hadn't been a great pass rush all night long. But you see D Ford coming off the edge. And he's getting basically blocked out. He's boxed out by Pierce Bowden, but it's coverage sacks. Bo Wallace, nowhere to go with the ball. Campbell puts it inside the five again, but goes into the end zone one more time. And D Ford showing no signs of that knee injury as he sacks Wallace. It's been a tough night for Bo Wallace and the Rebels on offense. There's still time, but they're down 11. Auburn has it at their own 20, leading by 11, 27-16 with 13-15 to go. They have done a great job running the football tonight, 214 yards on the ground. I would expect that this Ole Miss defense is going to see a steady diet of that Tigers running game going forward as the Tigers do have a lead. No reason to go away from it. All night long, when you think about it, more than half of the Trey Mason has contributed but a lot of it has been Nick Marshall, who has really exploded in the run game tonight. Marshall, the handoff to Ricardo Lewis, and the receiver with a big play. To the 34-yard line, give Lewis 14 yards. Ricardo Lewis, kind of Ontario McCaleb-like, when you harken back to those days, but you see the rushing, and a lot of those numbers to the left, those are on quarterback pulls where Nick Marshall is just reading the defensive end of Ole Miss as it collapses down. There's been some poor tackling as well. Cameron Otis Payne. Good run on first down. Pickup of seven. Last week, the Ole Miss defense kept Alabama out of the end zone until the third quarter. Well, Auburn has really given this Ole Miss defense trouble tonight. And now a penalty marker. In fact, several penalty markers. Bodies all over the place. It's Woodrow Hamilton that went we'll tumbling. Snap. Offside, number 56, defense made contact. The five-yard penalty results in a first down. It's always kind of amazing to me. You see 56 there. You know, it's kind of obvious who he is. He's the guy lined right up over the football. The ball's right underneath your nose. The 46. But that was a great hard count. Good job by Nick Marshall drawing the offsides. There's only the fifth penalty in this game tonight. Brandon Fulce, the tight end, lined up wide to the top of your screen. Sprinting out is Marshall. First down. It has been that kind of night for the junior from Pineview, Georgia. Another 12-yard first down run for Marshall. A little slow getting up. It's Nick Marshall, but well, once again, it's a quarterback pull to the left. Ole Miss unable to defend this play. And you see, it's D.T. Shackelford. He just crashes down inside, and there's no straight help. There's no linebacker or second-level player to come downhill to contain the quarterback pull. Trey Mason. 
Amen. He'll get two. <laughs> Robert Kim Dietschy on the tackle. Some words exchanged. I wonder, I don't know if Nick Marshall's, I think he got a little bit of a linger. You see him limping? I mean, that's a notice, that's a noticeable limp of the quarterback of Auburn after the previous run. And around to Quan Bray, he's bottled up. Lucky to get back to the original line of scrimmage and a yard more. Nick Marshall's injured. There, you see him there. He lands awkwardly on his left foot. It wasn't a contact injury. When he plants his left foot right there, it's like he jammed it. He jammed it again. That left leg. I don't know if this is left ankle or his left knee, but you see him there. He's gimpy. And considering what he's done, he's been the key contributor to this offense. I can ill afford to lose him. First charge timeout, Auburn. Auburn had too many men. Uh, Ole Miss, excuse me, had too many men on the field, and they were trying to get the snap off to catch the Rebels, but didn't happen. Ten minutes to go. All right, thanks, Matt. 27-16 here. Auburn, of course, coming off. The loss to LSU a couple weeks ago. Now, this is just before the timeout. It looked like Ole Miss had personnel issues. Well, a lot of confusion on the Ole Miss side. You can see Trey Mason. Look at him talking to his quarterback, saying, "Look, don't call timeout." Well, we had him. Nick Marshall's looking to his sideline. He didn't know what to do. Mason hit by Denzel Kim Dietschy, who recovered a fumble. <laughs> Earlier tonight, no game. Now fourth down for Auburn. Denzel Kimdich is a guy that Ole Miss, I think, has missed a good bit this year due to injury, but missed his contributions. He was an explosive playmaker for the Rebel defense a season ago. Made his presence felt tonight with that tackle, but also on the fumble recovery. Well, they kept that offensive unit out there for a while. Now they bring on the field goal unit to attempt a 54-yarder. It's Cody Parkey. Seven for eight this year with a long of 47. New. So Auburn comes up empty. 9-13 to go. Ole Miss down 11 gets the ball back. And a good field position. No official word from Auburn, but it looks like they were staring at Nick Marshall's right knee when he was sitting down. They got him up. They put him on the bike. Now he's wincing as he stretches it out. But it is look like it is that right knee. Those rushing yards have been so important to Auburn's attack tonight. 138 and two touchdowns for Marshall rushing. Ole Miss on offense. Good field position incomplete. Vince Sanders. Second and ten. Fifth drop tonight for this receiving core. Wallace chased. Has to throw it away. They started their last series, Matt, at the 45-yard line. Their best field position of the night and shot themselves in the foot. Pretty good field position again here after the missed field goal by Auburn. And again, they're doing nothing with it. Well, part of it's a function of these drops. You know, we talk about the importance of first down, getting some positive yardage. They're not getting a lot of help out of the receiving core. Right now, with the way Auburn has shut out this, this Ole Miss run game, Especially between the tackles, these receivers have to step up.
caught by Sanders. He battled the defender and hauled it in. Chris Davis was right there draping Sanders, but he makes the catch for a first down, a gain of 11. Played just like that. You see Bo Wallace hits the bottom of his drop, hands in his face from Gabe Wright. Sanders able to come up with a reception. Now deep, Moncrief caught inside the 15-yard line. We mentioned Ryan White before, and he's all over this, but you see Dante Moncrief able to stick with the football. He dropped the previous two, but he comes up with the biggest reception maybe of the, of the night other than his touchdown catch. Moncrief again, bubble screen. First down, touchdown! Second touchdown catch for Moncrief tonight, and Ole Miss. Making it very interesting now here in the fourth quarter. Let's see what Hugh Freeze is going to do, whether they go for two to make it a three-point game or kick the extra point. They're going to go for two. Wallace sprinting out, looking to the end zone. Directing traffic, comes back the other way, incomplete. Vince Sanders, the intended receiver. Elijah Daniel was chasing Wallace the entire play. And Ole Miss comes up empty on the two-point conversion attempt. It stays a five-point difference. Once again, though, Bo Wallace getting the ball to his playmaker and Dante Moncrief. They've had difficulty getting him rolling, but when they did, it ended up in six points, unable to get the two-point conversion. 27-22, but Ole Miss, a couple of touchdowns here in the second half, both by Dante Moncrief, the most recent touchdown catch, capping a five-play, 63-yard drive in just 44 seconds. And Ole Miss, two for three in the red zone now. Some concerned looks the fans here at Jordan Hare Stadium. Ritter to kick it off. Mason back deep with Quan Bray. Returnable for Trey Mason. To the 20, 25, 30. 35 and down at the 36 yard line. Good return from Trey Mason. Let's go back to the touchdown moments ago. The well, last time Ole Miss ran this same play, it ended up being a touchdown the other way. Watch Mathers, he's gonna come out and block on this receiver screen, and it's enough to get Moncrief clean from the line of scrimmage, breaks tackles on the five-yard line, and ends up in the end zone. Last time they went with this play, they were trying to get it to Laquan Treadwell, and they were unable to get out in front. Jeff Scott was unable to get the block on Robinson Therese, and he took it the other way for a touchdown. Both times, Ole Miss has run that play. Somebody has scored six points. We think that Nick Marshall suffered a mild knee injury on that last series, but he's back out there. Hands it off to Cameron Otis. Payne, big hole up the middle. Ball comes out, and it looks like Ole Miss has recovered. Cody Pruitt stripped it, and the Rebels have it. Clay, we've seen this before out of Auburn. In fact, it was week one versus Washington State. They had a lead. They're looking to salt the game away. This game's still very much in flux. But Auburn fumbled it on the ground and gave the Cougars an opportunity. And now Cody Pruitt, when he got his hand on the football, 
and he just rakes it out. It's pretty good ball security. Artis Payne's got it high and tight. Two arms on the football, and Cody Pruitt just rips this football out and gives his offense another crack to get back into this ball game. By Tavius Mathers. With a four-yard pickup on first down as Ole Miss has all the momentum as we are tucked inside of eight minutes now. Time of possession. Ole Miss has worn down this Auburn defense throughout this game. Wallace. Short pass to Mathers. Hit for a loss. Third down coming up. This is a big play now. Absolutely, you know, and credit the linebackers doing a great job. What Bo Wallace was looking to do, he wanted to get it to Evan Ingram. That ride of the play action is supposed to draw the linebackers up. Ellis Johnson was worried about that. The coverage has been superb by and large by this Auburn defense. Intercepted. Picked off at the 50-yard line. Ryan Smith takes it right back for Auburn. Second interception thrown by Wallace tonight. You see Ryan Smith. He's just going to read the quarterback's eyes. Dante Moncrief was singled up outside. And as he breaks off his route, Ryan Smith is right underneath it. And he watched Bo Wallace all the way. You see him? See the eyes of 24? He just goes up and makes a great catch. Best field position to start a series for Auburn tonight. And Mason plunges ahead. And Ole Miss again tries to rake the football out. Under seven minutes to go. Second and six. The clock is Auburn's friend now. Keeper, Marshall. He'll slide down, and he is gimping a little bit as he gets to the 40. Yeah, he's gimping a lot of bit, you know, before that injury. That's a first down for sure, especially the way he's been able to break tackles in open space. But you see tonight, Auburn more than happy to keep the ball on the ground. And it's because of the quarterback play. You don't often say that with that number of passes, only 16 pass attempts. But it's been the quarterback play that has opened up the ground game. Trying to keep this drive alive. They need to get it to the 36. You see offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley calling timeout for Auburn. He is the 29-year-old. Second charge timeout, Auburn. OC under Gus Malzahn. He's been his right-hand man most of the last 15 years. First as his starting high school quarterback and as an assistant coach. So what is Auburn drawing up now? Well, you know, so far tonight, we've seen Nick Marshall able to make plays with his legs, you know, on a third down, some third and longs, where he can keep a play alive, scramble up. I don't think that's what we're going to see here, given the fact that he is so limited, clearly, not nearly as mobile with that knee injury. And so because of that, I don't know if it's not a, if it's not a quick three step timing throw. I wouldn't be surprised if Auburn doesn't try an inside run if they can pick it up great. Otherwise, they've shown that they're not scared to try a field goal from this distance. The most storied conference of college sports lives on a new network. The SEC Network coming your way August 2014. For more information, go to GetSECNetwork.com. Great games in the SEC this week. Like Georgia just barely got by Tennessee today. And this one coming down to the wire in Auburn. 
Five and a half to go. Big third and four for the Tigers. Marshall wants to throw. Out of the pocket. Throws on the run deep. Contact down there. No flag. And it lands incomplete. Intended for Quan Bray. Sinquez Golson. The best cover corner on that Ole Miss team all over. A little surprised that they tried something, you know, such a deep ball here. It's a hand fighting going on by both sides, really. Paper, rock, scissors, they're thumb wrestling until the, while the ball was in the air. Sinquez Golson had an opportunity to be, come up with a turnover. Auburn's going to punt it away here. Stephen Clark has done a great job pinning opponents inside the 20. He's put six inside the 20. Good hang time here. Bounces at the five, and they keep it out. Jones, Dominic, make that Jonathan Jones. Great job on punt coverage, and it's a long field for Ole Miss. That's something that Ole Miss has had an opportunity to do twice tonight, unable to execute it. Jonathan Jones, he jumps from in the end zone. That was a very close play. Very close to it being a touchback. Each team with a timeout left. <laughs> We're starting field position for the Rebels tonight. Play pick. Wallace going up top. Incomplete. And he tried to get it into the hot hands of Dante Moncrief. He's got two touchdown grabs tonight, both here in the second half. They come up empty second and ten. Yeah, that throw doesn't, it didn't even give Dante Moncrief an opportunity. He's a big physical wide receiver. He's capable of climbing the ladder and coming down with receptions. But you have to keep the ball in the field of play and somewhat proximate to your receiver. This is the loudest it's been here tonight at Jordan Hare. Just get it off. Wallace. Again intended for Moncrief. And that was nowhere near where it needed to be. That's the back shoulder. And they have been out of sync on the wrong page all night long. When Bo Wallace is trying to go to this back shoulder throw to Dante Moncrief, and Moncrief isn't seeing it that way. It's a read that the receiver has to feel as well. Bo Wallace is seeing it. Moncrief isn't feeling it the same way, and they've been off, out of sync in those back shoulder throws. They do it again. Fourth down. <laughs> See the frustration on Hugh Freeze. Well, how many times? You know, Moncrief doesn't even try for this ball. This is just, it's not something, given the coverage that has been played by this Auburn secondary, it's not surprising that the, surprising that the back shoulder throw is there. But Ole Miss has struggled to execute it. And Moncrief has been late coming back for that football on at least three or four occasions. Campbell. His punt, not a good one. And Auburn will have it inside the 35 yard line. Now, Tyler Campbell was punting from the back of the end zone. He's had a tough night. He's had some pretty good kicks, which the cover team couldn't keep out of the end zone. That one, it shanked. And Auburn will take over at the 31 of Ole Miss. With 4.53 to go. Each team with a timeout remaining. You see the contributions and the meaning of special teams play. Well, Stephen Clark for Auburn, a weapon, pinning Ole Miss deep. Trey Mason. 
as the Tigers keep it on the ground and now tempers flaring penalty flags all over the place. That's Brian Bennett, number 95. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, unnecessary roughness, number 95 defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. The starting defensive tackle for Ole Miss. And a bad decision here. And they'll spot it inside the 15-yard line. Also right at the end of the play. There's Bennett. He's getting pushed in the back by Miller. Man, that's a selfish play. That is a really selfish play, and Sinquez Golson is saying, what are you thinking? Now you give him a free first down and a half on a short field. Auburn trying to put Ole Miss away. Mason carries a tackler. Denzel Kimdichie a few extra yards. A gain of six, second down and four. See, Auburn, this is the opportunity. Obviously, put this game away. When you look at it, Ole Miss has had their opportunities. If they don't get a stop here, when you're talking about an Ole Miss Rebel team that has squandered a fourth quarter where they had their chances and they've been unable to capitalize due to a good special teams play. And milk that play clock. And give it back to Mason. Might get a yard. Pruitt and Hooks combine on the tackle. So third down and about three here for the Tigers. And the challenge, of course, is when you get there near the end zone, you've got a mobile quarterback. You see a lot of sprint outs. It gives opportunity for the quarterback with a run pass option. But because Marshall is hobbled, I wouldn't be surprised. I doubt that we'll see another zone read look where there's a chance for the quarterback to pull it. It's either an obvious give, and it looks to me like that's exactly what it'll end up being. A straight handoff to Mason that time. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Hilton, the tackle, freeze quickly, calls his last timeout. Fourth down for Auburn. Third and final timeout. Ole Miss. With 3.06 to go. Knowing that they needed a, spot, a stop. They're going to bring corner pressure. As soon as Bray came in motion, Hilton was firing from his corner position, unaccounted for in the blocking scheme, and gets that tackle for loss. You knew that it was going to be a give, knowing that Nick Marshall's hobbled with that knee injury. You kick a field goal here, it's still a one possession game to tie. Ole Miss obviously had to, would need to answer. They've had their difficulties, their two-point conversion, unable to come up with it earlier in this ball game, and it would require that to force an overtime. With three minutes to play, you think about those opportunities that Ole Miss had and the impact that Clark's punt had and that special teams execution and pinning Ole Miss back and giving them excellent field position to create this field goal attempt. There's Clark, the punter. The special teams for Auburn has been exceptional this year. Now here comes the field goal unit. An attempt from 23 yards out for Cody Parkey. He missed from 54 earlier. Got it. So it's an eight point game. Still a one possession game. Ole Miss could score in a touchdown and tie it up with the two point conversion. And there is three minutes to go, but Ole Miss is out of timeouts. Exactly. And three minutes, it can be an eternity. Obviously, when we talk about these two offenses, where they can clip right down the football field, but the real challenge for Ole Miss is they've been so up and down, so inconsistent tonight. On the previous possession, the shadow of their own goalpost, three straight passes to Dante Moncrief, three incompletions. It started out with an errant pass on the screen. And Nick Marshall with the run game. Excellent reads from his quarterback spot. 
Dante Moncrief, who finally emerged in the second half with his fingertips juggling catch. And he showed his physical capabilities as well. And this is what Ole Miss has wanted to do to get the ball to the playmaker on the perimeter. But what changed this game was Clark's punt and the ability to pin Ole Miss deep. They ended up having to punt the ball away after a couple of back shoulder throws that just weren't read very well by Dante Moncrief and Bo Wallace that allowed Auburn to kick a field goal and force Ole Miss into a scenario where the best they could hope for if they only have one offensive possession is to tie this football game with a two-point conversion. Parkey could do that every time if he wanted to. And defensive coordinator Ellis Johnson would be happy if he did. That's the fourth touchback for Parkey. So, no big play in the return game. The Auburn defense comes back out with an eight-point lead they're trying to hold on to. The Ole Miss offense has shown some life here in the second half compared to that first half where they were abysmal. See if they can get something going and drive to tie this thing up. Bo Wallace will come out at quarterback, even though we've seen quite a bit of the backup, Barry Brunetti, for the Rebels. No timeouts. For Ole Miss. You know, it feels like Ole Miss has virtually abandoned the run game by and large. Or they've just gone straight to the air. Wallace going to Logan, incomplete. Oh, Davis running right alongside and covered second down. So Hugh Freeze frustrated. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, after the Alabama game. If Bo Wallace is seeing the game the way Hugh Freeze is wanting him to see it, is he going where Hugh Freeze wants him to go with the football? Well, there Davis is stride to stride with Logan. He's thrown four straight incompletions. That one's caught. The tight end, Evan Ingram. Another true freshman picks up the first down, a grab of 13 yards. Out to the 38-yard line. And underneath coverage by Auburn all night has been excellent. Evan Ingram very quiet from that slot receiver position that he managed. Clock moving, 2.40 to play. Wallace out of the pocket again. This will be his 47th pass attempt. Throws it away. Well, that time, really no reason to flush. I think Bo Wallace will credit the coverage once again, knowing nowhere to go with the football downfield. And these quarterbacks have a clock in their head, and as that clock is winding down, they know that the pressure is coming. That time, excellent protection, but Wallace still, after he flushed, nowhere to go with the football. Ingram dropped it. Third down is the sixth drop pass by these Ole Miss receivers tonight. You know, if it's not an overthrow, well, a misread on a back shoulder when they hit him in the hands. This receiving core that had acquitted itself very well so far this season. You know, they're leaning on them hard in this fourth quarter. There's Ole Miss's offense. And it's been spotty production. Considering the previous possession was three incompletions in a row. Lawson coming. Wallace is hit. It's Gabe Wright with the sack. Fourth down. Fourth down, They've got to go for it. Fifth sack tonight. Hit again. Carl Lawson. And now Auburn can run out the clock. Well, that man, Ellis Johnson, has kind of lamented the fact that they don't have a great pass rush. But Ole Miss is not a protection. They're not a good pocket protecting team. You see Laramie Tunsil, left tackle, true freshman, Gabe Wright. He's running right through Emmanuel McCray. And you see Lawson on both plays. Getting the better of Laramie Tunsil. He was the top offensive line recruit. That's the number two defensive end in the country coming out of high school a season ago. And on back to back plays, they're able to ice this football game. 
going back to that drop, and you think about it, Evan Ingram, the drop drops really in general with the perimeter play. If it's not getting the runs out to the edge, it's getting passes completed out on the perimeter, something that Ole Miss struggled all night long. 14 tackles for loss by the Auburn defense tonight. Tigers in victory formation. They're going to get their fourth win of the year. Tonight's Wrangler five-star player of the game, Nick Marshall. And you can see why. Well, it's, it's not the passing yards, 11 of 17. Those are the big numbers. But look underneath. It's the 14 rushes for 140 and two touches. That's 10 yards of carry. And the quarterback that was feeling it. You could tell that he felt it. He was seeing the reads on the edge. And frankly, Ole Miss made it relatively easy for him. Well, Carl Lawson, he got a couple of sacks, a pressure and a sack on that last Ole Miss offensive possession. But the way that the edge was played by Ellis Johnson and his defensive ends, that was the story of this ball game. After a three-win season a year ago, the worst season in 60 years for the Auburn Tigers, Gus Malzahn has this team poised to go to a bowl game in his first year. When you look at their schedule, they've still got very winnable games against Western Carolina and FAU. Not to mention the balance of the SEC schedule where they might knock somebody off. But good friends shaking hands tonight. It is Malzahn getting the best of Hugh Freeze tonight. In a 30-22 to 22 win for the Auburn Tigers. As they go to 4-1, and 2-1 one, and one in the SEC. And Nick Marshall, who already had that impressive win, led the team on a game-winning drive against Mississippi State. As he continues to become an even bigger fan favorite now here in Auburn, leading this team to an impressive win tonight against Ole Miss. I'll tell you what, not just Nick Marshall tonight, his play was exemplary, but this Auburn defense, this Auburn defense is growing into a for real unit here, and that's shorthanded losing McKenzie losing Montrevious Adams Robinson Theresi obviously getting the big explosive play that Ellis Johnson the defensive coordinator has coveted and then the coverage downfield that led to the sacks and then getting the pressure when they needed it this defense grew up I think right before this Auburn coaching staff's eyes and they're going to be a nice complement to an Auburn offense that seemed to figure it out with the ground game the passing game still evolving but clearly they can get it done on the ground with Nick Marshall at the quarterback position. Let's go down to Don, who's with Nick. Thanks, guys. You know, Coach said you had to be a running threat. I think you listened to him. What was the key to your success tonight? Um, it's just, um, we watched film on it. Then the ends that we played against this week, they crashed down hard. So him, Coach Miles and Coach Lassie told me I might be keeping the ball a good bit this week. So that's what it came out to be, and I was able to execute. For this team, what does this win mean? Um, it's big with us, Coach. We're just going into um, the next game, 2-1 and one in the SEC, and then we just just great to get this win in the SEC. Nick, congrats. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, Nick. They'll host Western Carolina and go to Texas A&M, host FAU. They could have five, maybe six wins before November. How about that? After a winless SEC season a year ago and just three wins altogether. Once again, our final score. 30 to 22 Auburn. Coming up next at Sports Center U. Thank you for joining us. Now we send it to Matt Schick in the studio. Thanks, Clay. What a performance there by Nick Marshall and Auburn. 30 to 22 holding on.